Any Finn Paladin is the most nostalgic deck for me in all of Hearthstone. It was the first combo deck that I fell in love playing with after mainly playing Wallet Warrior, Handlock, and Midrange Paladin during the beginning of my time with Hearthstone. But Anything Paladin will always have a special place in my heart because it was the only deck that I have hit rank 1 legend with back in 2019. So when Hearthstone released a new game mode that allowed me to relive my memories with Anything Paladin, I had to give it a try. I believe that Hearthstone Twist has insane potential to be one of the best game modes in Hearthstone. It gives older players a chance to relive metas that they fell in love with, but with a twist of new cards and possible tier 1 decks. And it gives newer players a chance to see what Hearthstone was like before they started playing, giving them new ideas on how to approach the game. Did you play during Stormwind and absolutely despised turn 6 OTKs? How about a format that gives you a chance to relive one of the best board-centric metas that Hearthstone has ever seen? Now you have that chance. However, there are some problems to say with the format and its current iteration. But it's funny to me that these problems were exactly what the old problems in Hearthstone used to be. Old Hearthstone metas were barely changed because of the design philosophy of the original Hearthstone designers. They didn't want to nerf cards unless absolutely necessary. So decks like Death Rattle, Aggro Hunter, Combo Druid, and Patron Warrior ruled the early metas of Hearthstone. During these metas, 1-3 to three decks were the top dogs that absolutely could not be taken down and were definitely the meta tyrants that you either had to play or you had to have a deck that specifically countered these archetypes. And that's exactly what's going on in Twist right now with Discard Warlock and Jade Rogue being absolute meta tyrants. But hopefully the problems with Twist will be addressed soon, because I loved climbing to Diamond 5 with one of my favorite archetypes. And if you're looking to have a different Hearthstone experience than what's possible in the current standard and wild formats, I highly recommend giving Twist a try, because you might be able to rediscover a deck that made you fall in love with Hearthstone to begin with. Or like, they're, they, I don't know. Sometimes I catch myself doing that every now and again where it's like, I accidentally click a video, I'm like, ooh, whoops, didn't mean to do that, and then it blasts my speakers, and I'm like, ooh, I really wish I didn't do that. This isn't technically Old, God me uh, old God's meta, it's Mean Streets meta, really. I mean, it kind of is, but, like, the funny thing about that is that Mean Streets decks aren't even seeing play. Like, the best deck in Mean Streets was Totem Shaman. Or, uh, like, Aggro Thunder Bluff Shaman, I guess. Alright, yeah, that all has to go. Actually fighting a pirate warrior. This might be a tempo warrior, but um, Okay, sweet. I was I was scared that he had the damage One mana slam dude warriors would have been so happy with a one mana slam back in the day All right, I'm on fire bro The better editing is doing a lot I feel like you're also just like upping your your thumbnail game. That's also very important Like your your thumbnails like when I look at them, they make me want to click them more. Because I'm like wait, what the hell? How does this happen? Like case in point with the I, I think you asked me this the other day And I didn't actually respond and I apologize But you I think you asked me if I watched your uh, your Odin combo with with your opponent playing Odin and I did and the reason why I watched it was because I'm like, wait, how the hell, what? I literally asked myself what? And that's when, that's when you know you got a good video. The battle. Oh, come on. Light him up. I think I always gotta play Finja here. I can always get value from this later. Just add broken, disgusting, and so on. Not that easy, man. If that was, if it was that easy, I already would be a Hearthstone millionaire. <laughs> I'd already have a million subs in my and my uh, my golden sub button from YouTube, but I'm barely I'm barely reaching 12k right now. Like we we did hit 12k today. I, I do have to say that though, we did actually hit 12k, and I'm not trying to take away from that. Uh, why Emperor? Because discounting Emperor, uh, like discounting anything can happen in the mirror is really important. It is literally the most cuttable card though. It's not 100% required. Oh boy. Bro Oaken. That's gonna be like the next card name. His name is gonna be Bro Oaken. Bro Oaken. His first name is Bro. First name is Ba, and then his last name is Roken. All right. 
Just like that, I could be a Hearthstone game designer. <laughs> A little bit scary to shuffle those into my deck, but it's like I kind of have to. I only need one more Bluegill Warrior. And I already have both Anything Can Happens in my hand. Maybe I can do a thing like I did last game where I just... Ah, oh shit. Uh, where I just start jamming the combo. It's not even killing the minion. I could a quality into... Oh, wait, he's stealthing it? Now I can just hit you in the face. Wait a minute, dude. Are you sure about this? Just hit you for 10. This is super good. Kind of wish that I found the Bluegill Warrior there so I could play one mana Bluegill into anything, but we're not always that lucky. Next twist uh, format, I'm hoping for Rumble so I can play Shrovala OTK Paladin. Aw, oh, dude, why does Paladin always have the most satisfying combos? Paladin's not a combo class. That's why. Com it's, it's not a combo class yet. It, when it has combos, they're just the coolest decks in the game. I love a, I love a paladin combo, man. So we mostly got to get rid of the taunt here. I can't draw too much because I do have you know 25 damage in my deck. So we'll get some healing here. Eye for an eye, maybe? I don't want to pick more draw. Three cards in my deck just kill me, and I'm just going to have to play Anything Can Happen next turn. I could do it last turn because I was actively giving him uh, armor. Oh, shit. It's a good thing I have Blessing of Kings, but... Oh, shit. We drew a bomb. Maybe I shouldn't have played my second Ivory Knight. It still might just be good to go ahead and do it. But the Murkai is enough to kill it. Alright, not bad. Not bad. And this should just kill him going into next turn. He needs to deal four to my face, and I need to draw both the Burring Mines in order to die. Question Warrior list, question uh, and question role play. Wait, what's wrong with his list? I feel like this is pretty standard. Oh, don't you dare. Oh, don't tell me I'm gonna hit the the 25 into 1 and 7. I did play around eye for an eye, at least. Okay, thank the lord. Yeah! <laughs> God, I love Murloc decks, dude. I wish there was, like, another, like, OTK Murloc deck. Because, like, every single Murloc deck... Aside from this one, has always been like some kind of unga bunga all in aggro. Control Paladin barely sees play, and when it does, it's overshadowed by the other Paladin decks. Like there's pure Control Paladin that was possible, but regular pure Paladin was just just too much for it. Uh, let's see here, Doomsayer. What? I guess a Warrior. I don't even need to keep Doomsayer. It was really helpful in the last game though, so maybe I'll go ahead and keep it again, just in case he has a turn one pirate. Yeah, exactly. Make Murlocs great again. Just make Murlocs fun again. Like, I don't want to just play an all-in aggro Murloc deck. I want Murlocs to have, like, other applications. Like, Gigafin is a great example of, like, a Murloc that actually has other ways of seeing play. Dragon Paladin is Pog. Man, I, I, I miss Dragon decks, too. Dragon Warrior is still somewhat playable in this format, though. All right, no reason to fill the Doomsayer. Oh boy. Okay, maybe there was a reason to play Doomsayer. Well, let's say I have this in a coin fin. Here. That is really doing a lot. And this guy's just going all in on tempo. Probably got a Sword Eater though. Oh yeah, Mutantis is another good example. A Murloc that's like a dirty rat. I guarantee you that's how they thought about it. Like, somebody pitched that specific idea. It's like, what if we had a Murloc that was, like, Dirty Rat? But instead of bringing out the minion, he's... I have exactly... I know exactly how Hearthstone game designers think. 
<laughs> Alright, so we're gonna do this to have like a gambit. If he ends up, uh, you know, killing the Doomsayer, then I keep a 3 3, versus now he might just swing the 5 into face. I can play Finja. I can play Keeper of Oldemon. If I need to buff the Finja. Oh, he's just going for the spare parts. Alright, that's fine. This could potentially be 2 to 8 damage that goes face. Oh my god, no. Oh, come on! Dude, I was kidding! I was kidding about the 8. And then just casually roll a 7? Oh my god. Alright, that's a bit of a problem, but this is exactly why Keeper of Oldemon is so good. And it actually keeps the Finja alive, too. I got some healing now, but I got bombs in the deck, so I don't really want to draw too much, but I still got to draw. There's still a Murloc War Leader in my deck. There's no way that Finja survives. Oh my god, there is a... Is there a way that Finja survives? This guy's just gone for... Oh, balls. Okay, well, this would be a reason to keep Finjo alive. Ah. Okay, I didn't draw the bomb, but also didn't draw the formula here. We're still, like, kind of tempoing him here. It was funny to watch. I'm sure Wild has a lot to offer, but as a newish player, Wild doesn't have a lot to offer me because I don't know the cards. I'm mostly started in uh, March of the Lich King. Well, I kind of disagree with that take. Wild doesn't have a lot to offer me because uh, you don't know most of the cards. I feel like if you don't own the cards, that's a completely different thing. Because, like, if you don't know the cards, if anything, that's just a reason for you to learn more Hearthstone. I feel like that could be a good thing. Not versus just automatically being a negative. It's not that many uses for equality. Drawing cards can be really risky here. I don't think I can afford to draw right now. Because I just gotta make it to the anything can happen turn. So because of that, I think I'm just gonna keep her of Oldham on the Murloc and just go face. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna play Solemn Vigil because there are two bombs and two mines in my deck and I'm only at 10 HP. I don't want to give him anything else. I just gotta survive two turns and he loses and there might be a possibility this board just kills him now. Okay, well, that also takes away a lot of damage. Gains more armor. I could just double consecration here. Double consecration, keep the board alive, set up the anything can happen. He's probably gonna play that taunt next turn. Wait, how much armor did he just gain? Four, right? Oh, calm down, dude. Alright, as long as I don't draw a mine, I think I'm fine. But he could also play a Sword Eater, and then suddenly a bomb kills me. Okay, not too much armor. Six. Oh, he's going for a double armor play? Ooh. Does this keep him out of range? No, it does not. The battle! Oh my god, dude! I love this de- I, I love how my decisions are mattering right now. Okay, I guess the rogue. Uh, I think I damn near want to keep the, the wicker flame. I definitely just gotta- Okay, hopefully this doesn't end up like last time where I was like one win away and then we just start losing non-stop. Hopefully I didn't just jinx myself with that. But regardless... Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of all of this. 67% win rate though, gotta love that. This reminds me of the bug where if you had ETC and Renathal in the deck, you had a hard time queuing in. Yeah, and that was because the game was, like, rejecting those cards for some reason. I, I remember that bug. Played a lot. <laughs> what can you do, though? Just go again. Just keep queuing. Hearthstone Client is just so ancient. 
It has so much history attached on it, man. I feel like there's definitely coding from like, you know, like 10 years ago, damn near, that's still in this game. It's just the, you know, the foundation that keeps it from collapsing. Yo, warrior. I mean, I don't want to, like, summon Jade. But, like, what am I supposed to do? Do nothing? By the way, what happened to the tournament bans? Why didn't you do them? Uh, if you're talking about for the last tournament, I just wanted to do a normal tournament and see what the, um... And see what the turnout was. That was the main reason why I did it that way. I just, I wanted to, I wanted more people to feel like they could sign up for it. Versus, like, what the hell's going on here? Red Bristles is so good, dude. I don't get why some people cut them. If I had to cut two cards in order to make uh, room for true silver, probably definitely cut Tharsen. I don't know what the last cut would be. I don't think it'd be Burn Bristle. Hopefully he doesn't just remove it here, but... Something, something Jade, uh... Stars or whatever it's called. Wait, what is that card called? Jade Shuriken or something? I literally can't remember the name of the card. Oh my god. Shadow Strike! Dude, can you calm it? Can you calm it down? Jesus. It only summons a 1-1, one, one, so I guess I'm fine with just playing the hammer. I think I want to coin into the Lay on Hands next turn, so I think that's what I, I should save up for. Personally, I didn't enjoy it, sorry to say. Well, it happens. You. you can't please everybody. And that's something that I've tend to, I've tend to learn. I, I had more sign-ups, though. So it was it was a W in that perspective. So I'm sorry that you didn't enjoy it, but it definitely, uh, it definitely was pretty decent still. I'm happy with how it turned out. By the way, I, I, that, that might, that might have sounded harsher than I thought it, it did. I don't mean, I, I, I'm glad you enjoy that you still played the tournament. I did not take that personally. The worst part about that is odds are, uh, pretty much every coder from back then has moved on. The industry just has a lot of churning because of deadlines and budgets and coders don't do clean coding. Which would include comment, uh, commentating. Or, which would include commenting, but fast coding, which tends to end in spaghetti code. I mean, that's just, that's a tale as old as time, dude. Like, once gaming companies finally realize that putting more effort for a better product is better, like, that, that, the industry's not gonna change until that happens. Because we, we, you need, you want a timeless game. But te but people are on, only care about time games because it gets X amount of money when the first, when, you know, when the project first launches. It just, it just really irks me, personally. That most companies would rather just churn out a game, get the pre-order money, and then go to the next project. Bobby Kodak needs more yachts with all that money. Well, that's not even, like, the issue that I'm bringing up. I'm not even talking about, like, corporate greed. I'm talking about, like, if you want to make income years down the line, having a better product is the best way of doing that. But companies only care about investing within things for, like, the first year and a half, and then they give up and move on to the next thing. It's almost like their attention spans are even worse than most consumers. That's more so the argument that I'm trying to bring up here. Feels like a really bad use of Consecration, but it's like, I just don't have a better play here. FIFA Ultimate Team says no to that. I mean, it's every company, man. But at the same time, like, consumers gotta stop pre-ordering stuff. Like, a game still in development? Don't pre-order it. The only thing that I pre-order is Hearthstone packs, because, but I already know what's in them. I already know the cards. It's just whether or not I'm gonna enjoy the meta. That's like the big question for me. But I still want to play Hearthstone and I need the cards, so it's like, there you go. Like, I'm fine with that. And that's not even really a pre-order, in all honesty. It's more of a pre-sale instead of a pre-order. Ooh, Avenging Wrath? Or is it Muster for Battle? Because I can, I can actually go for Tempo that way. I actually like the idea of Muster for Battle here. I have no idea what he's trying to do here. In all honesty. I've only had... Three Murlocs die, and that damn near might be enough, dude. Bluegill, Murkai, and War Leader. So that's four, five. Oh no, that's that's four and six. So that's ten damage. Fanonizer worked really well here. Honestly, if I top deck another, anything can happen. I'm just gonna jam it. Okay, that's fast. Nice. He's keeping himself busy though. Like, what is it with these Jade Rogues? I feel like I'm not going up against the good Jade Rogues anymore. What happened? 
How is this your only play? This has to be some kind of combo deck. I am very confused. Alright, so I'm hoping that he throws down a minion and then I can play Anything Can Happen. But at the same time, if this Finja just survives, Anything Can Happen can just win the game by itself. I don't think I'm dead, right? Oh boy. Okay. There's the gadget. I'd play it. If I didn't just exactly top deck Finja, then I definitely probably would have done it. Eight cards left? I mean, that's not that's not the issue, in my, uh, in my opinion. Like, I don't I don't need to play it immediately. Like, how does he kill a a a, 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 a stealth? He can't kill stealth minions. And now he's using spells in order to kill my minions. Yeah, this game's just over. Yeah, we're fine. In relation to the previous one, uh, you can't please everyone and you'll just go crazy if you think that you can do it. Bro, I've already gone crazy because of it. 